Hey YouTube, just wanted to share with you a quick way I found to prevent or help prevent, it's not going to foolproof, help prevent over temp of the hot end or the, the heated bed uh, using a Raspberry Pi and a TP Link smart plug. I think the author's also written a code that will work with a Wemo plug, but I don't have a Wemo plug. I'm going to show you how to do it with a TP Link smart plug. Total cost 30 quid for a Raspberry Pi if you haven't got one, 25 quid for the plug. The idea is that what will happen is that the Raspberry Pi will monitor the bed temp and the high end temp. If they go out of bounds, it will shut off the plug. It does that using your home Wi Fi network. The reason for this video is that if you watch my last video, you'll know that the Tebo Tornado has a mains powered heated bed, no thermal fuse, and a cheap solid state relay. I was concerned that the solid state relay could fail and there would be no way for the microcontroller to shut off the power to the heated bed and because it's mains powered that could be a nightmare uh, but this will work on any printer it doesn't need to just be a TiVo it would work on a rep wrap it would work on a um, a net A8 and at the moment you can see I've got my little Raspberry Pi there I've got my little Raspberry Pi the Raspberry Pi is plugged into the TiVo Tornado USB port it could also be plugged into a ramps board or it could be plugged into an ANET AA. On the other end of things, we've got a TP-Link smart plug. This is an HS100 TP-Link smart plug. It's a wireless plug. This is a ground fault interrupt device because basically I don't trust the engineering on the TiVo Tornado. That would just detect a leakage to the ground if there's a problem and shut power off. But this will shut power off if the Raspberry Pi sees an over 10. This is Octopi running on the Raspberry Pi. I'm showing you it on my computer. I can't show you it on my phone because I'm using my phone to film this video. But here you can see the temperatures um, and they are actually working. With the fake chip on the TiVo, because of the fake FTDI chip, this wasn't working. I was getting serial timeouts and all sorts. Anyway, I'll, co I'll cover that in a bit. You can see the temperature there, and there's two plugins here. I'm going to show you how to do this, but under settings and down here, you see the plugins. I've got a TP Link smart plug and temperature fail safe. So I'll just quickly show you this working. I'll preheat the PLA, I don't know if you can see that. That's correct, that's what it should be 60 and mark 200. Over here, we've got 60 and 200. In a temperature fail safe, I've set a bed threshold of 75 degrees Celsius. So what I'm going to do now is take it up to 76. And what we should see is that the little green light on the plug will go out and the temperature will drop to zero, or the target will. It will still be lit up because it will still be pulling 5 volts from the USB from the Raspberry Pi. But it will shut off the actual mains power to the printer. So in there I'm going to type 76, so I'm going to just do it from here because it's easier. It could be done on the printer, it could be done from here, it doesn't matter. Set that as the target. Target set 76. I think. Temperature's going up. Temperature's going up. Temperature's going up. Gonna be a bit boring, I'll pause it. 75 and a half. You hear that? The plug went out. And the power is off. The main power. It's still got 5 volts because it's got the USB. But you can't heat that with 5 volts. So it works. And I've tested it running and it works. And then on Octopi we get this. Temperature fail safe. Temperature fail safe. Temperature fail safe. It's hit the threshold and it's shut off the printer. Right, so this is all going a bit better now. I made a few more mods. I basically opened up the box and uh, rewired it all with proper three core flex. I'm not going to show you that. I took this apart and I sleeved each individual cable with earth sleeving, which is good to 3000 volts. Then I put tape around it before it was clamped, so it's now effectively triple insulated from the clamp. Then I put this little thing on there to stop it from bending as much. It basically tapers off as it gets further away. So it's now got some strain relief here and it's got some strain relief there and I'm a little bit happier with that. Anyway, in order, in order to do this you're going to need Octopi. There's the website for Octopi, octoprint.org. You go get the image file, you download the image file, you don't bother unzipping it. You go and get a program called Etcher. 
that's etcher you open up etcher you select your unzipped image file your drive which you've obviously put in your computer that's a micro drive a micro usb for your raspberry pi click flash might take 30 seconds might take a minute don't know while it's doing that go and download a program called notepad plus plus which is free and when it's finished uh, doing its thing with etcher it'll probably moan that the card's not forward and formatted cancel out of all that leave the card in the machine You'll have a new drive showing up. On that drive will be a list of directories. One of those files will be called Octopi WPA Supplicant. Fire up Notepad++ and open that file with it. What you'll see then is a whole load of guff about what different type of network you've got and what your password should be and what your um, network name should be. Basically, most of you are going to be using this one um, and what you need to do is knock out any of these that reply to your one with just a single, not the double, just a single. So you knock out the first uh, number thing, the second number thing, the third number thing, right down to the bracket. Then you put your network name in there, leave the quotes, and you put your password in there, leave the quotes, and then you save it in Notepad. You then properly eject the SD card, you don't just rip it out, and you stick it in the Raspberry Pi and you boot it. So that's what I'm talking about, it will say when it's finished formatting the card. Don't uh, format it, just cancel out. show you this, I'm going to use my little donor, uh, well, donor, whatever. This is a Raspberry Pi 3. If you're going to do it, you might as well use a Raspberry Pi 3 because it's the same money. It will work with Raspberry Pi 2. The difference is with Raspberry Pi 2, you have to buy another dongle, dongle for Wi-Fi. It's more of a pain in the ass to set up. It's slower. It's the same money, so you might as well get a Raspberry Pi 3. You've got onboard Wi-Fi. Right, so the Raspberry Pi is booted up, it's on the network. Might as well plug in the smart plug. Now, I'm not going to show you how to set up the TP-Link smart plug. It comes with a manual, you install an app on your phone, you set it up. Once it's up on your network, plugged into your network, we're going to go into the router, we're going to give this a static IP, and we're going to give this a static IP. The reason we're going to do that is because there's absolutely no point having this if this can't talk to this. And the only way it'll be able to definitely know is it will know the MAC address of this, it will assign it an IP on that basis. So even if you have a power cut, the router goes down, the router comes back up, this always gets the same IP address, and preferably that one, because you're probably going to want to remember what that one is anyway. So I'm going to put some tape all over my screen, and I'm going to show you how to configure the router. So you'll have to forgive the tape everywhere, but for some obvious reasons. Go into your router, it's either probably 192.168.1.1, or 192.168.0.1, or it's router login or it's something like that and it'll come up saying username and password put that in if you don't know what they are I can't help you so once you're in what we want to do is we want to see what's attached to the network so we click attach devices so it's getting a bit ridiculous now but what you're looking for is you're looking for what it is device name MAC address and IP address write down the IP address write down the MAC address for your smart plug and for your octopi which you should see if you don't see it and the Pi is not connected and that could be because you didn't put the right password and stuff in or could be something else but anyway if you can see it right down then we're going to go to the network section now when you get to this bit you're going to go to under on a Netgear route where it's under advanced it's under LAN setup and you're going to see um, basically a sign in address reservation I've blocked out mine obviously but what you're looking for is your smart plug and your octopi you see the IP address and you see the MAC address. You add them and you add, so you click on the one you wanted, you would add it and you would apply it. I would add them first and then apply them all at the end because when you apply it, what it's going to do is it's going to write to the ROM of the router so that whenever, even if it loses power, every time it sees that MAC address, it's going to get that same IP. So you've written down the IPs and every time the router sees that MAC address for that device, it's going to give it that IP. That means that what we're going to do in a minute will make more sense. So first time set up wizard. Obviously if you've got a Raspberry Pi and you've got Octoprint running, you don't need to watch all this guff, but if you haven't, it might be useful for someone. So this is a first time set up wizard. Thank you for installing, take it all through. I'll just try and point out key things. The first thing I point out is don't install the plugin blacklist. And the reason for that is there was a problem with the smart plug plugin um, there isn't any more, I haven't had one and I'm running the latest version but anyway I wouldn't do that if you want to use this and don't want to have a headache uh, so I'll just spin through this if anything comes up when I think of it I'll keep access control enabled so obviously I'm just doing this for your benefit not for mine 
next. Configure plug 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 blackness. Don't don't don't. You want to disable it. Next. Set up a slicing profile. You can import your profiles from Cura. This will only work with Cura up to 15.04, but I don't even use 15.04. I just run my things off 3.5 off the SD card with this plugged in and the temperature monitoring and the camera and everything still works. So I'm not going to install any of that. Go. Set your printer profile, put your name in, what it is, your build volume, you know, your axes, all of that sort of stuff. The, the uh, accelerations, whether the axes are inverted. That's only so you can control it through the interface here. Um, and your hot end, you know, the default thing's probably all right, but you wanted to spend a bit of time just make sure you get that right. Anyway, it's not why we're here. So, all done. And it gives you all this guff about, I can't see through the camera, but yeah, hey, here we go. Happy printing. So we've finished and we're all set up. Right, the next thing we want to do is we want to go to uh, the little settings thing up here. Um, we want to go to plugins, plugin manager, plugin manager. Uh, and then we want to go to uh, get more. Type TP Link, TP Link Smart Plug. There it is. Install it. It'll install it. I'm not going to show you installing it all. It's boring. It can pop up like that when it's done it. It's installed it. Then we want to install Temperature Failsafe. Temperature Failsafe. Where is it? Where is it? Temperature fail safe. Install. Obviously, I'm not going to be using this. This is just so I can show you how how to do it easier than trying to explain it. And boring, but it will do. So it's now installed. Temperature fail safe. You can install other things like you can install the stop button. You can install the thing that will turn it off after it's finished the print. Um, and all of that sort of stuff. You've also will have a camera, but I'm not going to go over that here. That's all stuff that's not important for this particular purpose. Now we go to our plugins, save. Uh, I'm going to reboot it actually and go to the plugins. So I've gone ahead and rebooted it. It said do the update. So I might as well do the update. Do the update. Are you sure you want to do the update? <gasps> yes. I might come back in a minute. Update successful restarting. Sorry, I'm eating. This is quite involved, I admit, but it is worth having, I think. Right, so it's done the update. We're going to settings. You can now see we've got a TP Link Smart Plug plugin and a temperature failsafe plugin. Now, a couple more pain in the ass things to do. First one is to go and download a program called Putty. And this is the last pain in the arse thing to do. But before we do that, let's go in the temperature fail safe. You see what this does is if you click enable, which you should do, then it will check for certain temperature thresholds. If those are reached or met, then it will disable the heaters and cancel the print job. But don't forget the reason we're doing this is if the MOSFET or the solid state relay is fused short circuit. Trying to do that will have no effect. So the only way to shut it off is to shut the plug off. That's where this bit comes in. So in here, we are going to write a script. Or we're going to, more specifically, we're going to write the name of a script. We're going to write the path to a script to call if these conditions are met. And that's why we need putty. I'm going to link the um, how to that the guy that wrote this plugin sent me because I asked him how to do it, or how to whether it could be done, and he worked it all out. And he came back to me and said, "Yep, yeah, it can be done. This is how you do it." I'm going to link that in the description, and I'm going to link it on a document somewhere that you can see and copy and paste the shell script into this, save it, and it'll be done. But let's first go into Putty. That's Putty. Now what Putty is, is it's a way of, because don't forget the, the Pi hasn't got a screen. Only at the moment we're looking at it for a web server on our laptop. 
but it hasn't got a screen. The only way you can really get into the shell of the Pi and actually tell it to do stuff in any real way that I know, and I'm not an expert, is putty. So we type in the IP of the Pi, not the smart plug, that we write down earlier. And it'll give you a warning. It's just saying you never connected to this before as you want to. Yep. Then you log in. And on a Pi that you haven't changed before, the username is Pi. And that isn't my IP by the way. This is the throwaway one that I've just set up. I've been trying to hide all this stuff. 192.168. No, what am I talking about? No, no, no. The default password is Raspberry. And it will open up. Now, first thing you need to do is type password P A W S W D. It asks you for the old password. Yeah, that was Rust Berry. And it asks you for your new password. Put a decent password in, write it down. I've just picked a random password because this is actually my. Um, I use this Pi for other things. This is just a demo, so I've done that. Now we're going to write a shell script, and I'm going to, as I say, link this. This is the probably the most head fucky part of the whole thing. I'm going to type cd squirrely space squirrely thing slash nano turn off printer sh. What that's going to do, it's going to go to the home directory, and then it's going to create a blank file called turn off printer sh, and that is the shell script that the Pi is going to run when the temperature is out of bounds. So to be honest, you might as well just copy that off the link document I'm gonna give you. Copy that, right click, and it's put it there, hit return. Now it's created a file. Then let's hop back to the bit of text he gave us. I'm gonna grab all this lot here, and this is the actual guts of it. That tells it it's a shell script, the rest of it I couldn't tell you what it means. I'm just gonna grab the whole lot, only up to the end there. Right click, copy. Go into our, doc, uh, our file we set up here, and you might as well just make this a bit bigger. Um, hit return. That is now a shell script, but it's no good. It needs an API key, which we're gonna put in here, in, including these two arrows. It also needs the IP of the plug. And the IP of the plug, I'm nearly going to drop the phone here, wouldn't it? The IP of the plug will go here. Where it says put IP plug here. Put IP plug here. Right, so let's go and get that. So go back to the uh, pie that's open in uh, Firefox or whatever you're using. By the way, if you've got an Apple, I cannot help you. Um, we go to the Octopi instance, go up the side here, it says API. It'll come up with a code like that. This API means nothing to me because I'm going to bin this instance of Octopi after I've shown you and I'm going to put it back to what it was and anyway, my other one's over there. So that's the API key. Copy that. Copy that. Just hit the copy key. Go back into the into the shell script you created with the cursor keys, not with the mouse. Go to the end there, take all of that out, up to the other arrow, and paste it in there. So I'll just show you on it. I'll take that one there. I will copy that. Go back to our shell script. And I will hit the right click. It's pasted it in there. All right, and then the other bit you should have written down anyway. You should know what the IP of your plug is. Because when we looked at the router, it was the smart plug IP, which you've now fixed. And that's the reason why we fixed it. Because we've got to hard code it into the shell script. So there, you would uh, knock out this part up to there. And you would put in your IP of your plug, which might be 192.168.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.
one or one dot well, well it won't be one dot one but one dot eight or something it will be whatever you write down for your plug right okay once you've done that so that, I don't know that one dot eight say once you've done that you hit control X save modified frame buffer or whatever modified buffer click yeah what do you want to call it you want to call it what it's already called turn off printer.sh hit return last thing you need to do with that shell script is to make it executable and then what you do there is you copy this line of code and what it says is change mode to make it executable of the shell script turn off uh, printer.sh and you probably don't want that space on the end because Linux is very fussy about things like that. So just copy that, whack it in there. Difficult to do through the camera. Hit return, right click, hit return. Done. Now you can exit. You're on the home stretch. So back in the Pi, we go to our settings, we go down to our plugins. Plugin. Uh, temperature fail safe. I don't know why it's done that, I've selected it all. Enable, click, so enable, click. And then here, we go to our file here. No, we don't, we go to our file here. This is what we want it to run, a newly created shell script. Home, pi, turn off, printer.sh. We put that in here. Paste. Okay. And you set what you want for your high for your high end, you set what you want for your high for your bed. And then you save it. Okay, and then you go back to your smart plug. Plug in. And here you put in your IP of your smart plug that you wrote down when we were doing the router thing. So it'd be 192.168.1. Whatever you put into the shell script as the IP for the smart plug, the one that you've hard coded into your router, put it in there and then you give it a name. And then I, I just knocked all this out. Warning, auto connect and auto disconnect and all of that guff. And closed it. And I saved it. You've now got. Over temp protection, assuming that all went correctly. If you want to test it out, so I'm onto my main one now, my not demo one. If you want to test it out, little bolt here, click it. On, off, on, green, off, red. Just doing that then you will go to set a temp test so you plug it in plug your pi in plug your pi into the USB at the side of your Anet for convenience or RepRap or TiVo uh, there is a gotcha with a TiVo what I'll do in a minute which has to do with the fake chips I use and a workaround if you're good with a solder knife but you plug it into your printer power up your printer so you've got your printer running off the smart plug you got your Raspberry Pi with its power, and then you've got a USB going from the Raspberry Pi to the printer. Then you have to connect, because otherwise this is all meaningless, and the way you'll know it's connected I'm going to turn the radio off. So it might take a few seconds, but the way you'll know it's connected is you'll see the temperatures here. So quick test which felt safe set the bed to 35 so save go back to here and set the bed temp to 36 37 not 370 we won't do that go come back when it's a bit closer so the plug is currently on green light yeah Temperature fail safe. Plugs off. So I hope that helps.
Now there is one gotcha with a TiVo Tornado, and I'll show you this. I was a bit drunk when I did it, but I'll show you me changing the chip in the main ball for this. It uses a Maker's Base 1.4 board with a fake FTDI chip. Um, it may not work all of this. If you're getting janky uh, updates on the on the um, temperature, so it's sticking, it's going, it's sticking, and then you're getting serial timeout, serial timeout. You'll probably find if you've got a TiVo Tornado that it's got a fake FTDI chip. As an epilogue, I'll attach me changing that chip and show you how to identify the different types. But this 100% will work on anything with a genuine FTDI chip, some with a fake one. It will definitely work on the ANET because that's got a CH340. And it definitely works on a Ramps 1.4 because I've tested it. So yeah, I hope that helps and I'll see you all later. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Bye. This is the Devo Tornado board and it is a Maker MKS Base 1.4, one of the original Gen 1 boards. It's one of the first boards they put in it. And the problem with this board is if you're trying to use Octopi or you're trying to do anything related to USB, you're probably going to run into an issue. The reason for that is it's got a fake FTDI chip. FTDI chip. Which is what I've just what I have just taken off here. What is here? So I'm going to show you, I'm, I'm grafting on a new genuine FTDI chip. CN408, whoa, CN4086 T232. That's a fake chip, I'm just taking it off. I'm going to show you the real chip. Okay, that's the real chip. There's the chip transfer complete.